Hi everyone, um, Rachel Copera here, I teach art. Um, welcome guys to your second fire right. Students in my class um, do fire rights in their sketchbook about works of art. Um, last week, the students talked about um, this, uh, David Sekiros' Echo of a Scream. And um, they talked about it in class. The blue group did because they're learning about the art criticism process. That video is right here for all of my students because um, it might be useful as you get to know the painting. So all students are gonna go ahead for their fire right for this week, write about the painting because hopefully your um, classmates got to talk about this painting and give all of you ideas. If not, again, you have this resource, you have this video if you weren't in class or if you don't remember. Um, so that link is right here. Um, kind of listen to it and play it as you write. Okay, great. So um, a couple of things I really, you know, I've cut down the fire rates because I want you to do them. I want you to write and I want you to think. So make sure you do this fire right. First of all, don't give up when you're like, oh my God, this is being extra. Um, do a very quick sketch of this painting for 10 minutes. It doesn't need to look nice, okay? You could see already some are popping up on Seesaw and they're just quick sketches. They're messy and the point of drawing the painting is to see it. Please put a timer, don't spend forever on it. The meat of it is noticing things and writing about what you think. So I want you to label your drawing and then I want you to answer these questions. These questions are basic and complicated at the same time. But the good thing is you're writing about what you're seeing. You're not writing about a book. You're not writing about a quote, right? You're, you're telling what you see. So like just writing like, I see two screaming babies. One baby is coming out of the other baby's mouth. Um, I'm noticing one really bright red intense color and then a bunch of dark red in the corner. I'm wondering what the red represents. You writing questions, you're talking about what you see, that's totally fine. So the main four questions are what do you see in the painting? How is the painting organized? Meaning, where is the focal point? Obviously, the giant babies. And how does the artist achieve unity? Is it balanced? Is there an even amount of weight? It is balanced, right? Because it's a work of art. It's in a museum, so of course it's balanced. So you just have to talk about, well, it is balanced because you got this baby here, you got this baby here. So what do you see in the painting? Pretty easy. Talk about any sort of elements of art you see, like a lot of value. Right? How is the painting organized? Okay, you could talk about line, how there's a lot of like line and action and texture, and then it slowly disappears in the background. That pulls the eye up. You talk about the focal point and how the eye moves around the lines. You could talk about the repetition of the trash and how that creates unity. I'm giving away answers, basically, but I want everyone to feel confident with this process, and you will see stuff that I don't see and everyone doesn't see. So we're posting this to Seesaw when we're done. Next, what is the theme of the painting? What is the message? What is the artist saying? Okay, this is where things get subjective and it's your opinion. This whole thing, there is no wrong answer. So one and two, you're you know more describing what you see. It's more fact-based. That's how you're gathering your evidence. Three, what is the artist saying? You, that's based on you. Now, I had students say like all sorts of awesome stuff about what this painting had to do with, how this painting made them think about the storming of the Capitol and how we're forgetting about the generation. Politicians are forgetting about the current generation and leaving folks in poverty. I had students point out that this is a baby of color. So it makes them think about children of color being left behind. I'm not sure if that's what the artist was saying, but what you see, what you bring to the painting, well, that's your truth, there's nothing wrong. As long as you're doing the fire right and you're putting your heart and you're applying your experiences to the painting, bring yourself to this painting, what do you see? Um, a way to figure out and crack the puzzle of what you see is talking about, you know, what are the main symbols? What could the garbage represent? What is the, What could this weird tree represent in the background? Some students have been saying life. What does this factory represent? What does it mean? What impact does the artist want to have on the audience? What do you think it is? So what is the uh, uh, artist 
want the audience to do? Do they want them to think? Do they want them to feel? Do you think this is a good work of art? Why or why not? You could say, yes, it's a good work of art because it has me being like, this is so weird. There are two babies and I'm just staring at it, mind blown. Okay. Um, after you've used uh, my instructional video to get ideas, this video, um, after you've done your writing, then you can read about the painting and add more. Um, make sure you've done a sketch, a quick drawing. Again, the drawing's quick. Okay. Um, as far as this document, don't panic. Okay. It's basically the same assignment, but the first page are the four questions with sub questions to get you thinking. The second page is the, um, painting a little larger. Let's see if I can make that larger for you guys live here on the YouTube. Okay. And then the third page, now I deleted my scaffold. The third page is basically supports and scaffolds. And yeah, here they are coming back. It's because I made the painting bigger. Um, it's the same assignment. It's just a bunch of sentence starters. Um, don't know how to change these numbers, but first step, what do you see? Talk about elements. How is the painting organized? What is the artist saying? Do you think it's a good work of art? These are the same questions. Okay, but they're they're the sentence starters. Don't freak out. Okay, this page right here, don't be like, oh my God, I missed this extra. It's actually really useful. These are the questions. First step, describe. Second step, analyze. Third step, interpretation. Fourth step, judgment. This column is just a bunch of sub questions to get you thinking. And if you'll notice, these are all the words that you should be using. You don't have to use all of them. These are words you should be using for the second question. These are words that you should be using for the third question. We haven't talked about aesthetic theories in class yet. The blue group hasn't taught anyone about it. Don't worry about it, but do you think it's a successful work of art? So these are just more scaffolds. What's happening in distance learning is we are not using the vocabulary enough in our conversation and when we think like that's how we're scoring the lowest. So try to make an effort to use some of these words. I would say at least three per question. Box the words, I'll give you extra points. A, 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 A. Okay guys, so this is your second fire right. I hope it feels easy because we kind of like started it in class a little because the blue group was teaching us about it. Um, and it's four big questions got your sentence starters here with a lot of sub questions and you have a massive word bank on the back. Um, please be open to doing this. Please do this. I want to give everyone an A. I want everyone to feel like they're getting ready for college. Yeah, my name is Rachel. I teach art. I also teach drama and other things. And I hope you watched this and you used it to find success. Um, again, this is for your sketchbook. This is Fire Right 2. Bye guys.